Sheila, tell me a little bit about your experiences meeting Sheila and Jay and, and Graz. Oh yeah, that was very special. It was a very special time in Graz, I have to say. In the school, the jazz school in Graz back in those days, it was, I think it is even the oldest, I'm not quite sure, but it's one of the oldest jazz departments in Europe. In Europe, yeah. And they have very good people there and they went on for many years very successfully, but they never had a vocal department. And I, you know, I was growing up in Tyrol, in the mountains, mm -hmm. in the middle of the mountains with an aunt of mine. And I was doing music there. I was, um, we were having a band already, and, and it was kind of a pop fusion, mm. rock, something like that. Little jazzy influence. But I didn't really know jazz. I knew some records, but I didn't really sing the music or something. Mm. And the only tune I knew was Summertime, mm. which we did adapt to our band. And and when I heard my boyfriend at the time, he was a guitarist, and he wanted to go to study guitar in Graz. And and when I and I said, well, you know, why not? You know, so I did go there. I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, and um, so I went there with him and I heard somebody had told me that uh, Sheila Jordan would be coming to teach the vocal class mm -hmm. for a semester. I have, this was the first time I heard her name. I didn't know anything about her. I didn't know if she was blonde or dark haired or if she was black or white mm -hmm. or tall or small or anything. I didn't know anything. And I just thought, Sheila Jordan, that's a cool name. I like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I go there. <laughs> so I just went there and they had these auditions in the, in the classical building of the classical department in a beautiful room. And we always, the singers were outside and one by one we had to go in and sing two or three tunes. I didn't even know what, what we had to do. It was the first audition they made, I think, back then. And it was in um, springtime of 88. I went to Graz in 87 and 88 springtime, March or something was the audition. And of course the night before, a friend of mine came to visit me um, for the audition and the night before the audition I dreamed that I didn't make it. You know, everything went wrong and it was terrible and I thought, oh my God, you know, I'm going to fail anyway, you know. So I went there anyway and there were all these great singers and... They were like, and I was like, oh my God, you know, everybody's singing. Everybody sounded like Al Jarreau to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody who yeah. sang jazz, I loved Al Jarreau back then. And everybody, anybody who would sing any jazz line sounded like Al Jarreau to me. Because I couldn't even, I didn't even know anybody else, mm -hmm. right? So, and there was one singer who, uh, who made the addition to, who was there was at the time was Theo Blackman. I don't know if you know him. If you know Theo. I know her name. Yeah. He's a wonderful singer and he lives in New York ever since, you know, since we, we started a few years together and he he's a very good singer. And so anyway, I walked in and what happened, I told you I've never seen a picture or anything of Sheila before, but when I walked in and I saw that woman, she was the woman that I dreamed for the night before. Wow. Can you believe that? And that moment, I was so nervous, I didn't even realize the fact of what really was happening, you know. Yeah, I just yeah. thought, I saw her, I thought, oh my God, I'm failing, you know. She's looking like the woman in my dream. Yeah, yeah. The only difference was that, that the woman in my dream was like really, he, she looked really mean. But Sheila looked really very nice. And she was very warm-hearted and very, very warm and, and talking to us. And, and at the piano, at the time, there was Peter Mikulic. Like I told you, we studied then together, and he, he, I mean, he was playing with Annie Ross and with Lambert, uh, with Dave Lam, uh, John Hendricks. He mm -hmm. used to play a lot now in New York. And he was at the piano. He was about my age, but he looked like 15. I was 18. I was just, just before, yeah, just no, 19. 
and he looked like 15. But he was a great player back then already. He was 19, but he was great. And and I remember I was walking up the stage and they asked me, Sheila was sitting there and then Karl-Heinz Micklin, who was leading the whole department, and Peter at the piano. And then they asked me, what are you going to sing for us? And I said, summertime. And I turned out to the pianist, do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me. I think so. <laughs> like, half of the people were singing Summertime anyway, mm. right, for the audition. So I sang that and I sang one chorus, that was all I knew, and I just stopped and I said, okay, that's it. I didn't even know about any, any improvisation mm. or starting or, or, or ending a tune or anything. <laughs> I didn't know anything. But Sheila took me into the class. Wow. She obviously liked what I did. I, I'm very, very grateful she did because I sometimes thought, I don't know what she heard, but anyway. But, but she took me in the class and I was the youngest girl in the class. They always called me the baby of the group mm -hmm. and back then. And that's how it started. With so her. you were about 19 when you got in the class. Yes. That's great. Yes, yes I was 19. And, yeah, and ever since... Then Sheila, the second semester when Sheila came back to Graz, she stayed at my apartment with me. And for the next one she had organized that Jay would come over to do a semester and then Jay stayed with me. That's why I know them really well. So we're really, we always say roommates forever. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, but it was a great, great time. There were some wonderful singers and wonderful musicians and great teachers as Sheila and Jay and later on Mark Murphy was one of the teachers mm -hmm. and Andy Bay. Yeah, you told me that Andy Bay came. Yeah, yeah, that was really great. And with Sheila, what I have to say, she was really the, the strongest influence because in the first two years with her, or the first year even, I have a feeling I learned everything. I, I know now what I really work with. You know. She was very, she's a wonderful teacher. She still is around a lot. Mm -hmm. And she's, she was never after voice coaching or voice teaching. She was always about the music, how mm -hmm. to work with the music mm -hmm. and how to really learn to sing a tune and be there and find your own voice to express mm -hmm. it and sing it and not not think about what great arias you could make or whatever so yeah I'm very very grateful I had those teachers and possibilities there back then in Graz yeah Sheila the woman of my dreams <laughs> <laughs>